Good afternoon, everyone. This is Frank Quinn of Heritage Ohio. Welcome to our monthly webinar. Today we've got a real treat. We have Kyle Ezel joining us uh, to talk about designing a true local community. Kyle Ezel is an associate professor of practice in city and regional planning and chair of the undergraduate program in city and regional planning at the Knowlton School. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> where he has taught since 2005. Ezel has 17 years of experience as a practicing city planner, and his work at the school involves students heavily in experiential learning, both in nearby communities in Ohio and on the international travel programs he manages. Ezel studies how communities implement ideas that shape their physical identities. And his goal as a planner is to create unique and dynamic urban communities based on identifying original solutions for each project. Ezel's research and work relies on identifying locally original ideas to create 100% original communities. Ezel has published three books, and they are Retire Downtown, The Lifestyle Destination for Active Retirees and Empty Nesters, Get Urban, The Complete Guide to City Living, and new out this month is his latest book, Designing Local. Uh, before I turn it over to Kyle, um, I want to make sure that um, you know that uh, we welcome questions on the presentation. And uh, once Kyle has finished up the presentation, we'll take a look at the questions that you type in and uh, go ahead and answer those questions. As far as tech issues, if you have any video or audio issues, a lot of them can be solved just by uh, logging out of GoToWebinar and then logging back in. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn the microphone over to Kyle. Thanks, Frank, and thanks to Heritage Ohio. I'm, I'm very privileged to be um, here today. I, I really like this organization a lot. I've served on uh, boards in the past and continue to to uh, keep up with Jeff and, and everything that you guys are doing. So thanks so much. Um, I'm, I'm happy today to share with you a plan that uh, I think I can honestly say that in the in my almost 20 years experience, I have never worked on a plan that has been this much fun. And um, in keeping with last month's um, topic, which was Jason Sudi's happiness in design. And I'm not sure exactly what he said in that, uh, in that webinar, but I'm going to continue the design theme today and introduce you to a, a very special plan that, that I've been involved with for Athens, Ohio. And since most of you are listening from Ohio, you know that Athens is, um, you know, is a very well-known place that uh, everybody in, 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 the, in the state has some ties to. So with that, I'll go ahead and, and start the presentation. Before I do, um, I want to, to thank a few people who helped on this plan. Um, lots of people, including many people in, in Athens, Ohio, the citizenry of Athens. Um, also, the leadership of Athens, the elected officials, and the city of Athens itself from the mayor and the city council to the city safety director and public works director. Um, we had a committee called the Essence of Athens Committee that was appointed by the mayor. And these folks here did a, uh, an amazing job uh, working tirelessly on this, on this um, very interesting plan. And I want to say hi to Paul. Paul Logue, if you're watching, um, I'm not sure if you know that uh, this picture existed, but Here's Paul. He was the lead planner, the lead person in Athens on, on this, um, this project. Also quickly need to thank MKSK, which was a partner in the project. They're a uh, Columbus, Ohio uh, planning and design firm. And here are the folks that were involved. The rest of the team, Amanda, Josh, Andrew, Taylor, and Zach. And here I am. This is a kind of a, a forced pose. I, I kind of wish that I'd been a little bit less stiff here, but 
Nevertheless, it's the, the best picture I had to show you who I am. And um, as Frank said, I'm an associate professor of practice at Ohio State. And this is my office. And this is my firm. As a professor of practice, I have to practice. Um, I'm judged on, on, what I, on my work and not, not my research, um, research meaning uh, journal articles. My practice is my journal article. So here's my, my firm and, and um, hope you get in touch with me. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty here about um, the topic at hand today. Before we begin the actual plan part and uh, introducing the contents of, of what's in there, I want to tell you about a few issues that um, that have been going on for a long time in the uh, in the development world, in the planning world, and in, in design world. Um, we're all trying to make our communities better, and I know that many of you are working on main streets and trying to make your main street uh, better. But what we end up doing most of the time is making nice places and and not necessarily remarkable places, and that's a huge uh, a huge issue, a, a big topic because. Uh, virtually every place is nice. Uh, you don't usually go to a place and say, this is really not a nice place. It's nice. And we're all working really hard on getting to nice, but very few places are getting to remarkable. And the remarkable part is what draws people. It's what makes people take pictures. Um, it, it's what it, entrepreneurs and CEOs want addresses there. And and people want to go to school there and talk about it. And nobody really talks about NICE very much. So this has been a big issue in my career, and it has been for a long time, too. And I'm sure all of you get this idea. Another issue is that we're all generally doing the same things. And you know, case in point, we're all on this webinar waiting to find the best practice to implement. Well, if everybody's doing that, on one part of the, from one corner of Northwest Ohio to the southeast corner of Ohio, and we're all learning about what we're doing and then implementing that whatever we're learning, then we usually get hom homogeneity in our design in our communities, which doesn't really help matters except make us more nice. Now I know that we're all working really hard on um, we're all working really hard on, uh, on on what we're doing. But who wants to work hard, really, really hard, if we are making each other the same? Okay, the third issue here is that uh, as hard as we're working, we all want our communities to stand out from the rest. Um, we want to put our places in the spotlight, but I've, I've learned that a lot of people, uh, including me, uh, sometimes don't know how to do that. So. How do we get to remarkable? How do we get less nice and more amazing? So these are the issues that I'm going to confront today in the plan um, and talking about what happened in Athens. So uh, I'm a professor and I can talk, you know, I can talk all day long and all night long. And what helps me keep on, on topic is tell you exactly what we're going to talk about today from now on. So we're going to explore the the essence of Athens plan and you hopefully will learn how it improves Athens economy and how it it will help Athens stand out from the rest as remarkable through design to make powerful impacts and also how you can do a similar plan for your community but not copy what Athens did Maybe copy the process if you want to, but the process that you're going to learn about today is um, is designed to create products that are very locally specific and virtually uncopable. So these are the things that, that I want you to learn today, and hopefully you will. Okay, so here is the essence of Athens' plan. Um, I'm going to talk about the physical attributes of the, of the printed plan that's being printed right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we're just finished with it. Um, you'll see that there are two main pictures here. And the one on the kind of the faded one on the left is a very important part of Athens culture. It is Athens block. These are special bricks that are made by a local brick company, now defunct, called Athens Brick Company. 
And these bricks are all over Athens, and they're special because they say Athens on the brick. So um, there are, I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but there may be songs written about these, these bricks in Athens. People love these bricks. Um, they, they, if they could, they probably would make their beds out of these bricks. You know, they would do, you know, make their uh, living room floors out of the bricks. They love them. Um, so uh, a design element that people love is something that helps make communities remarkable. So therefore, this is one of the things that I wanted to feature on the cover. Another uh, aspect of Athens that's powerful is the passion flower. And you see this very close up of this colorful, it is a flower made of scrap metal. And um, the website for Passion Works Studio says that abled and, and um, both abled and disabled people help make this flower. They sell the flowers and people in Athens buy them and put them on their garages, put them in their, in their homes. So you see these flowers all over Athens. So these are two special things that are happening in Athens that may not be happening anywhere else in the world. So therefore, that helps make up the essence of Athens. But importantly is the subtitle that you can barely see there, but if you squint, you'll see that it says, a strategic design plan for economic enhancement and community competitiveness. And that's where we're all, you know, if, if we don't have economic enhancement and community competitiveness, most of us won't have jobs. So in essence, this Essence of Athens plan ends up being a economic development tool and a powerful one too. This is called the Honey for the Heart Parade. And Patty Mitchell in Athens um, heads this up. It is a parade where people dress up and make, a, make these huge puppet, puppets and prance the puppets down the street. And it's only Athens. It's only in Athens. And you can see here that, that this is a remarkable parade. It's not something you find uh, in most places. What the Essence of Athens plan tries to do is to get this spirit get the culture of Athens implemented on the ground. Um, because oftentimes when you travel through nice communities, you may not see what really is happening in that community. So extracting the essence out of the people, this parade, for instance, and every other aspect that we can possibly find for Athens and what makes Athens Athens, then that's what we're going for. And that's, what, that's what's powerful about what I'm talking about today. So as you look at this um, parade, I bet you can think of some things in your local community that you that don't happen in other places just like this doesn't happen in other places. Maybe it's not as, as uh, dramatic as this and in your face, but there's definitely aspects of your community that you can work with. So some of the guts of the plan before I start showing you the pictures um, are the goals. The first goal of the plan is to explain our uh, Athens-specific design inspirations and showcase and celebrate the design of Athens. This is important for people who build things, architects, designers, landscape architects, developers who propose anything on the ground, um, business owners who improve their property, citizens who want to do something to maybe their yard or, or to the exterior of their house or anything that you see on the ground, signs no matter what, to explain the Athens-specific design inspirations so that Athens can show up on the ground. <clears throat> Another important goal is to establish a culture of high expectations for Athens-inspired design to reinforce the culture of Athens. Um, currently, Athens doesn't have any design rules or design expectations necessarily. I think that they have big design ex expectations, um, but they, don't, they, they didn't have a definition of what those expe expectations are. And that's what this process helps to do. Um, also to encourage a widespread, increased celebration of Athens so we can share it with the world. Um, what's cool about this is that um, interesting processes and plans such as this start to spread in the culture and start to spread um, through schools and universities and, and business organizations and just people. And when people see cool things happening in their town, they can it, they can tell people about it, and that perpetuates the essence of Athens as well. So those are the goals. I put this picture in because it's actually in the plan, but it's really important.
because an architect's about to sit down here and let's say that there is a, a development proposal for Athens and the architect's going to sit down. What is he going to or she going to do? Um, going to roll out that paper and start designing something. Let's say it's a drugstore or let's say it's a restaurant or let's say it's uh, new signage or anything possibly possible that could be designed. The architect's going to sit down there and either open up something that has been done a thousand other places or, um, or 50,000 other places and put it down in Athens, in very easy work, or that architect's going to do something really cool. And the, eth the essence of Athens helps that architect or designer, landscape architect, developer, understand the expectations and really start to do something amazing and remarkable on this desk space before the plan starts to happen. Well, for these people who are sitting down at the desk, there are three ways to use this plan. For them to understand the meaning and intent of what they want to do, or I'm sorry, what Athens people want them to do very clearly. Also to glean design inspiration, inspirations from a part we'll be uh, reviewing here in a minute called Showcase and Celebrate to discover and understand the Athens design DNA. Um, I'm going to talk about that too, how we extracted that design DNA so the architects, landscape architects, developers can really get in there and make something truly remarkable for Athens. Also to learn how to take action in reinforcing the culture. I talked about this a minute ago about how um, the culture can change but also how um, how the people who are in charge of building our places can make sure that the DNA makes it into those designs. So the process of this was really fun. Um, down on the bottom left is a uh, one of many meetings that happened there. Well, this is the big kickoff meeting, so not many of these bigger ones. But the kickoff meeting uh, got people to understand about how important this is and how this is an economic development driver. Uh, just think about how how people at Ohio University want Athens to be, uh, want people to fall in love with Athens, Athens city, not just the campus, and how um, the tourism people who are trying to get people to visit ha the Hawking Hills area to come south into Athens. Um, all these things are important, and, and if Athens is a remarkable place, it already is, but it can be even more remarkable, then that is definitely economic development. And you can see that uh, on the, the bottom right is uh, Andy Stone. He's the... Uh, the city public works, I mean, sorry, the, the director of engineering. And he was heavily involved because a lot of this is going to need to be, uh, need to have the approval and blessing of people who are in engineering. And then we, we have people on the, on the top who are looking at ideas that were extracted by a community process that ask the citizens to come up with 500 ideas, or sorry, send in photographs of what they, th what they think Athens is. Not what Athens should be, not what Athens would improve Athens, but what is what is it? And we got 500 um, responses in photographs and several essays and some paragraphs through email and snail mail. And this information was talked about and honed in on and drilled down to what exactly are the ideas for the design for Athens. And that process took a long time. But it was really fun. These are what we call napkin sketches. We had a, a volunteer from Ohio University, Taylor, hi Taylor, who, um, who helped uh, figure out really quickly, not to scale, just figure out some of these ideas that were in people's heads. And we had lots of these that uh, we call napkin, napkin sketches that can be um, uh, developed in more detail. All right, so that's the, that's the background. Let me show you what uh, is in this plan. And as, as I do, I want you all to think about what elements of this plan, how, how your, your downtown, how your main street, your community could, could benefit from something like this. So part one is showcase and celebrate. Back to this, just to remind you where we are right now. The Athens design DNA extracted from the, the process um, is nine specific things. And if you're a designer and you're designing something and you look at this, it looks a little vague. How can we imp implement music, the Athens music and the Athens river and accepting attitudes into our 
design. Well, we didn't leave it to chance. Let me show you how this Athens design DNA works. So you, you propose a project, and you're looking for help to figure out what this project should look like. Um, we want Athens, the Athens community wants hills to be implemented into that project. And that means defining uh, projects that ascend and descend, overlap, are uneven, sometimes they're lush, sometimes they're gray, sometimes they're colorful. And then give, you, give people who would be in charge of these designs some very specific adjectives, natural, curvy, picturesque, forever, and have them be creative. Uh, a lot of times design guidelines are restrictive, like our window should be this wide, and that uh, when, uh, material should be this color and, and this type. Well, this gives people creative freedom to figure out um, what Athens is, and this helps them get, uh, get there. So imagine your own design in your town for a Hills shopping center or Hills colors, Hills restaurants. What would, that, what would Hills look like in your community? Um, now, of course, what, what we don't want to do here is have everything be Hills. That would be kind of, um, I don't know, a little ridiculous to see everything looking exactly the same thing. So what we encourage uh, designers to do when they when they uh, pr propose something in Athens, is come up with um, some mixes and matches of, of the elements of the Athens community design DNA instead of just one thing. A river is another one. Uh, it flows, it cuts, it, it's rerouted and re-engineered, but it's part of the story. So the river is very important. Um, it's a big aspect of what makes Athens, Athens. Here's some uh, Hawking River design prompts, peaceful, flowing, natural, cheerful. So again, how is this different than everyday design guidelines? Well, I told you about the, the size of the windows. <clears throat> the big thing is it requires huge creativity. Ordinarily, uh, to get to nice, we don't ask people to, to stretch their minds and, and make them work for something that could be uh, a, a beloved project. You know, we just ordinarily we just say, here it is. Here's what you have to do. Do it, and then they do it. And a, a lot of times that's fine. And in many many situations, that uh, that kind of of uh, directive makes for very good development. Um, but it's not nearly as much fun. And I think I think that unless we're having fun doing what we do, then it's not going to be. Uh, the, the product is not going to be nearly as as grand and celebrated. And the big thing is how, how different this is, is it's exclusively Athens. Um, could you imagine something in your downtown on your main street being exclusively yours and knowing that there really isn't a way to copy that story into another place, although people will want to do that. So how can we, let's go to your downtown to see how it's working. And, and let's see if we can do that. And then you realize that we really, can, we really couldn't do that because that story is local and that story is only in context to that, the physical geography that surrounds it. Some more DNA, nature. Um, it's lush, diverse in size and color, ever attempts to reclaim and repopulate, defying the grid, seasonally a variable. And it's edible and nourishing and delicious. Think for a minute. If you looked at a development project and, and the first thing you said, that is so edible and nourishing, that is delicious. Well, that, that kind of expectation is not normally required of, of our communities. That's how um, what Athens is doing, what, what they hope to do, is get that elevation of, of expectations and outcomes. And here's, the, here's some design prompts for nature. Arresting, sustainable, solid, emotional. Athens has this um, pretty ugly, I, I don't know if it's ugly as, as nondescript, parking garage, and it's right downtown across from the city hall. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this uh, parking garage because it is really needed in that very tight space in the valleys of, of, of Athens, especially in, down, in uptown, sorry. It's uptown Athens. Um, 
However, the locals, the first thing that they, they thought of when, they, when we were going through the process is we've got to do something with this parking garage. Um, it's, it doesn't say Athens. It's, it says uh, utilitarianism. It says uh, function, but it certainly does not say nourishing and delicious and all those other adjectives. I'm going to show you what they propose for this in just a few minutes, so keep, remember this as we go. Music honors Appalachian origins infused with ongoing immigration of outside influences, big band, street musicians, coffee shops and bars and festivals and garage band. So how do you, you, um, you stream in music and the, the various varieties of music that are, are very much a part of Athens and, and, the, um, and Ohio University into the design? Well, they want to see strenuous, inspired, impassioned, heart, uh, catchy, and spiritual design elements in the proposals. Um, I'm trying to think about how something looks musical without looking over the top, but it can be done, especially if, as I said before, if you mix and match some of these design elements. Um, next thing is brick and stone. You guys, this is very important to Athens, as I told you, the Athens block. Um, Athens block is, is a religion, and although their stone in Athens is not quite as, um, as, as loved as the, as the brick, it's, it's very much up there. So a lot of things that already exist are brick and stone in Athens. But what is interesting about the expectations here is, is um, it's not just taking a McDonald's and putting some stone on the front of the McDonald's. It's actually using these, the attributes of the brick and stone, not necessarily just slapping on the stone itself, even though that's, that's a nice design. But this McDonald's is in Miami, Florida. It could be anywhere. So in order to get that essence of Athens, you have to make sure that you, you look beyond just the veneer and, and get into the, the actual design of the, um, of the, the development. Another one of their design DNA uh, elements is youthful outlook, playful. This is my favorite one. Playful, whimsical, hopeful, enthusiastic, boisterous, testing boundaries, ever seeking a purpose. I want to live in a place. I want to visit a place. I want to talk about and take pictures of a place that's ever testing boundaries and boisterous, hopeful, and whimsical. That's my kind of place. And that is what Athens is going to hopefully see in the development in the future some of this fantastic expression of youth that exists in a town in, down in the, the hills of Ohio. And here's some more. Oh, this is the wrong one, but you get the idea. Uh, another element is little bigness. This is very interesting because Ohio University has 30,000 or no, 23,000 students or so, and it makes the little town seem like an international destination because it is an international city. So you have a lot of things that are dynamic and, and, um, and uh, big in a small little uh, Ohio town setting. So robust and accessible, enterprising, zestful, the prompts of uh, little bigness. Inventive spirit is, uh, is also good. Originality and intellectual curiosity, artistic creative, creative ingenuity. That calls for some very interesting design um, uh, results avant-garde, new, original, ingenious. And this is, I think this is the last one, accepting attitudes. Um, they're big on uh, accepting attitudes in Athens, and they want to make sure that the development reflects this as patient and good-natured, casual and joyful, open-hearted, unprejudiced. So those are the, the, the design DNA elements of Athens. It took 16 months to get there, to get us here a fun, joyous experience for, I hope, everybody involved down there. It's been, it was for me. Um, think for a minute, what does your design DNA look like? And what currently, what, what, uh, what are the results on the ground saying about your community? Is it nice? Is it remarkable? So food for thought, food for thought. Here's some examples of how you, people might use this DNA in their yards. Um, it won't be a normal yard. It will be expressive, natural, and spontaneous. Uh, homes, this is really interesting to me because um, I'm from 
uh, Tennessee, so it's not, I'm not far, I didn't grow up far away from Ohio. But what I noticed about Ohio and, and the Midwest in general is that people really like um, to stay to mud and earth tones in their communities. Um, taupe, I mean, uh, tans and beige and, and nice colors, very nice subdued colors. But in Athens, it was really remarkable to, to find out that they wanted big, big colors. They already have um, uh, interesting colors on their houses, and their color palettes for their homes are unlike anything I've ever seen um, in Ohio, and, and they want to see more of that. The Athens development that they want to see, too, is, um, is evident already, already in a lot of uh, areas of town. Um, stuff that says local, like Miller's Chicken. I'm not sure if any of you have ever been to Miller's Chicken, but... Um, Apparently, and I've never, I haven't had chicken there either, but I, I hear that the chicken is so much better at Miller's um, just because it's in this building and because people are, are, are uh, using this as a gathering space and it just is so special and pinpoint, pinpoints Athens. Um, so think of the special design DNA that could be extracted for your community. So that's section one. And uh, I hope that, that uh, as a professor, I'm not being too professorial and going too fast. Uh, let me know if I am. But I want to show you the maybe the more exciting part of this is the reinforcing, reinforcing part of Athens. Paul Logue uh, gets credit for what I'm about to, to tell you. He said that uh, what Athens wants to do is set the, the tone for development themselves instead of waiting for developers and, and the private sector to fill in that development. And what that means, I guess, is um, when you're a planner or you're working in, in, in any civic organization, you make rules and you make suggestions and you wait for those suggestions over decades. You know, you wait to see them implemented and hope that you live long enough to see those things, um, especially in places that aren't growing. But what Athens is doing to reinforce this is um, – take action with their own infrastructure to use the design DNA that has been set forth by this process and then make that happen on the ground to show people this we're, we're leading this this charge and then when development private development comes in they'll fill in those blanks and I'll show you here what I'm talking about um, by the way this is not the plan of Athens I mean this is not the actual document of Athens this is uh, made for TV and not you, if you, uh, there's lots more in this plan than just what I'm about to show you is what I'm trying to say. So world famous Court Street, um, Court Street is named. This is the uh, the uptown main street. It's their primary street and the most beloved street. So this street um, uh, is named for the courthouse and court that goes on in the courthouse because the courthouse is on Main Star Court Street. But the locals consider this more a courting street. Because people from Ohio University and other places find their love match here. So um, that's how people locals see Court Street. Uh, so they have these fantastic alleys. Look at this. This could be in Manhattan, but it's in Athens. And it links the, uh, the western section of Uptown into Court Street. Now, when looking for a project that can be uh, essentially... Athens for public infrastructure. I'm going to go back up and show you that picture of Court Street. Court Street is pretty much built out. There are a couple surface parking lots that may someday become something uh, more you know, set back on the front. Uh, there are only a couple missing teeth in, in uh, Athens. But that's really not a place to start because it could be filled in someday. So the best place to make a statement are in these alleys. Now one of the ideas in the process came from Patty Mitchell, who said that, um, that there needs, perhaps needs to be a branding of Athens called Love, Athens, because Athens is where people fall in love. Um, and while this, is not a, this, is, this exercise is not necessarily a branding exercise, um, it's branding in a way that design becomes the brand, but the sayings aren't, aren't we're not making up slogans, right? So we were trying to figure out ways to, to help uh, uncover or, or implement Love Athens in a way that's not slogany or 
you know, um, just just words. So Paris is the obvious obvious thing. Uh, over the bridges in Paris, you have people locking their love, and they people come from all over the world to do this. And this is a popular thing in cities all over the world now. And what uh, the thought process for this was: we don't want to do what other places do, and maybe we'll maybe we could come up with another idea, like the Passion Works. Uh, could give us some scrap metal and we can make something to tie on something or we could go to the hardware people could go to hardware stores and get some kind of hardware plastic rubber tie or something besides locks because we didn't want to copy uh, Paris's idea but it was it quickly became apparent that you know we don't have a, uh, a, a you know, Paris doesn't have a patent on love and locks make sense people understand them they're easily uh, uh, buyable and and you can purchase them anywhere so we stuck with locks. So the uh, the sketchers, the napkin sketcher, started making some ideas. And here's what we came up with. Uh, this is specially made only in Athens. Uh, love theme in the, in the alleys. So there's ties to what is local, which is the, the court street courting and not court house street, and where people fall in love. And you can see that there are all kinds of varieties that people can use within the alleys to lock their love onto these um, onto these uh, specially made placards. Um, and you can see on the left, some of them have opportunities for locking underneath and around the letters. And on the right, you can have opportunities on the letters. And we we know that these will be filled up fast. So these will, would be um, uh, able to take away in six foot increments and then placed in a park, a love park, and then always regenerated. So uh, we saw just a few weeks ago that one of the Paris uh, uh, bridge lock uh, fences fell into the river. So we don't, we don't want this to fall on people, uh, down on people's heads. We have to make sure that it doesn't get too heavy. But that's one example of how Athens could make infrastructure uh, only Athens. Another way is Athens bike racks. What you see here is, is probably what everybody listening has in their, on their streets. You, um, you need a, a bike rack, you need a functional place to, for people to park their bikes, and you get a landscape architect uh, catalog, and a, a, a catalog where you buy things like this, and you, you purchase you know, B104, the most popular one and the cheapest one, and then it comes delivered and you implement it. Well, that's hom homogeneity. So what Athens decided to do is take a look at their already cool old-fashioned bike racks, not to get rid of these. These are neat because they didn't take these away. Um, you can tell how old that is. Um, but <clears throat> what you see on the right is the ridges uh, window. The ridges is an old, quote, insane, as un insane, insane asylum, unquote, uh, on top of the hill that overlooks Athens, and uh, the historic preservation uh, splendor has these these grates that could be used as local patterns for bike uh, bikes. But here's the blocks. People love these blocks, as I said, and this this one out for the the design uh, for the bike racks. So the sketcher started sketching and came up with a design for how the Athens block could look as a bike rack. And then we, we hone the idea a little bit more, and you can see this kind of looks like the brick, but bricks aren't, only, aren't gray and red. They're more subdued patterns, and we ended up with this. And this, this matches the, the color patterns on the brick, and this may be able to be locally manufactured and implemented in uptown and all over the city of Athens. That's another way we, we, uh, we made local Athens infrastructure possible. Another example is stairways. Athens is cool because one of the reasons it's cool is because it's hilly and there are stairs, public stairs, that uh, that help people get up and down the hills instead of going a long way around to walk back to their houses from uptown. Um, and there's great opportunity, look at this, there's fantastic opportunities here. This is a blank, uh, a blank slate. It's very functional, but like the parking garage you saw, it's not very useful. I mean, it, sorry, it's, it's not very Athens. It's very useful, but not necessarily Athens. 
So the sketcher started using the uh, local ideas. And by the way, he didn't just sit, sit alone to do this. Uh, the Essence of Athens Committee helped him get here. So you see some examples on the left as uh, are, that's using the Athens block uh, bike rack, and you see the uh, the uh, an entrance way that says to Washington Street above, maybe using some some permanent commercial grade lighting to help people see. And there's some platforms for resting. Uh, you can see on the right side there's an idea for uh, maybe some whimsical and fun. Um, words that are on the risers of the stairs. And then you can see even on the top you see some, some um, oh, sorry, in the, in the mid resting place, you can see the, uh, the, the ridges pattern in that light. So here are some, these are just a few ideas as I said. So this is one easy example that could, could happen in Athens um, that came from the process to show people oh that's Fairview Avenue up there easy to do so this is a very cheap way of doing it you can go a little bit more expensive uh, in carrying out exactly or near, nearly exactly what the uh, the sketch said making these uh, entrance ways and this is pretty easy to make Athens because it's already already hard to copy if you're if you're in a flat community there's not very many places that have these uh, these stairs Cincinnati has some and other areas uh, in the, I know that Oakland has them, but it's already special. So making, just enhancing this makes this Athens. And you can see the bike racks on the left too. Here's a view at night. So another example is um, the protest. There's a protest space at the courthouse in uptown Athens. And Athens citizens are very, very, uh, expressive and they they want people to speak out and they love this protest space uh, that's just on the the northeast side of the corner on I think it's court and union you can see the people down there if you look closely on the very bottom uh, right and so some of the ideas was uh, included some loudspeakers and and uh, and step up places for people to to officially make their their ideas known. And then other people had some literal ideas like a soapbox, but we did some research and there are, are many places, especially in the West, that have not actual bars of soap, but soap boxes for people to climb up on. Um, but then we thought about it and this is a really serious thing. It shouldn't, this, this is one thing that may not be, need to be as whimsical and, and uh, expressive as Athens. But because Athen uh, Athenians love this idea so much, perhaps we just um, put some really important words on the stairs, on the risers. Easy enough. Another example that came out of this was uh, an Athens block stamp. This would be for people uh, citizens and business owners who are developing a, uh, a new uh, sidewalk or maybe they're building a swimming pool and anything that, that you have to pour concrete on, that the city would make a, a, a stamp that people could check out of the Engineering and Public Works Department and take it home for free and then you, and stamp Athens Block all over their, their concrete kind of like this the, as the sketch goes. Um, this is a very easy way to make local projects and, and, um, and, and private projects very much Athens. Something, something like this. This is, a, uh, this is not real, as you can see, but something like that would be interesting, I think. Another example is crosswalks. You can see that this, the, uh, the napkin sketcher uh, had some ideas for Ohio, for Ohio University there, but what ended up winning out on this one was the the um, the window grid on the ridges. And this is called a Barnes Dance, and this is already cool, really neat, because Athens is one of the few places that have this this uh, very complex crosswalk system, and the, the, uh, the traffic signals have to correspond to this, but having the, the patterns say Athens instead of just you know the engineering specs from the manual of crosswalks is, is is special. 
one thing that uh, one idea that you probably are aware of out there in uh, in Main Street land is treating the signal boxes. You got uh, every traffic signal has one at least one signal box uh, attached to a pole somewhere or mounted on the sidewalk. Well, there are plenty of different opportunities to use uh, Athens patterns for signal boxes. And here's one in, in across from the courthouse. And you can see that um, this, something like this could be implemented very easily. But the problem with this, I think this was one of the problems with, um, uh, with this idea, I think, is that uh, lots of places are doing this. So if Athens comes up with a, uh, if they want to do this, they have to make sure that they're doing only Athens work related to traffic signal boxes because otherwise everybody, I've, I just got back from Taiwan and a Taipei city has uh, this sort of thing all over on their traffic boxes. I, I've seen it in Cleveland. So you have to be careful to make sure that uh, this becomes Athens and they're going to do this by employing their local um, sorry, Paul, I don't remember exactly what the, the committee is called, but the, the cultural arts um, people, the folks who, who are in charge of public art, to come up with a program to make sure that local art is, um, is implemented. And I could go on. And again, this is only a few uh, items that are in the plan. I could go on and on, but uh, there was a lot of talk about benches, and you can see that that uh, the passion flower on the right, especially, is is represented in these this shape of benches. But what won out on this idea was the hills, uh, Athens Hills. So you can see that you can actually make a bench on the, the top right, uh, make it a uh, make hills out. I mean, sorry, make benches out of actual hill uh, backrests. On the right, you can you can implement hill designs inside of the, the bench itself, like this. But what ended up is that um, something much more complex and interesting. Um, Nils Brahm at MKSK actually made a, a model out of clay and took a picture of that, of the clay, um, in, a, in a scaled area of this protest space. And um, so you can have, this actually, is the, the stairs are just behind the tree. So in, when you get tired of protesting or you want to relax a little bit, you can come down and relax on these uh, these specially wood carved only Athens benches now to the parking garage this this is the uh, my favorite one and it's so simple and so interesting and fun uh, I gave you an introduction about the parking garage it's it's a um, very boring kind of building and there were so many ideas for this parking garage this is a parking garage in Kansas City, Missouri, and this is the library district in downtown Kansas City. And this is pretty one of a kind, and it can, it can be copied because the books in there are, are unless they're local, I see Lord of the Rings, it can't be that local. So unless they're local books, it doesn't really make a lot of local sense, um, but it, it's cool. And there, I don't have time, but I, I could have shown, uh, present, presented 50 or 50,000 more interesting parking garage designs. But um, some of the ideas was to were, were to um, make the parking garage an international parking garage by painting international parking uh, terms on the parking garage itself, uh, making it more natural. Some people even thought maybe put passion flowers up, actual passion flowers on on the garage. But one thing that we didn't want this to end up being is. Uh, I got you all know about the Chicago cow. Uh, is that what it was? The cows that they put everywhere? No, we have. Wait, do they have cows in Chicago? I'm not sure. Pigs, pigs in Cincinnati, okay. but we had corn in, in in Columbus. So everybody started putting these, you know, making their own thing. We didn't want that to happen. So um, we thought that this is the the outcome. And you may not know what this is, but there is a blue version of the passion flower that's. You know, passion flowers are completely native to Athens. Oh, I don't, I didn't, I didn't put it in. But these colors are extracted purely from the Athens passion flower, and you can see that uh, what these are. These are these are steel rods that are hanging down. That will be hanging down, and they can be made with um, with the same uh, recycled material, upcycled or recycled materials that that the passion flower is made out of. 
So that this could happen in Athens, and it would make such a, a statement and a story, because all of these things that we are we proposed here and that Athens is trying to do is trying to tell a story. It's not just look at that nice building. Here's a remarkable story to go along with it. Okay, so we're almost finished here. So the, the third thing is share with the world, and this section is the implementation part. And that's always what people ask. How are we going to implement this? How, how is that going to happen? Well, here's how it's going to happen. The first thing is that Athens, and this is happening just in the next few months because we've just finished this plan. Athens is going to explain the expectations to real estate developers, the architects, the urban designers, and business owners, citizens. And we are going to have a, um, oh, sorry, Athens is going to have a, um, a PowerPoint available for the closed circuit TV, a, a PowerPoint that, that kind of like what I'm doing right now to, to tell people about what's going on, um, and also distribute the, the, the digital copies and the actual printed copies of the plan to everybody to have every, everyone understand that we mean uh, we, we mean business, and we are we're ready to cr for you to be extraordinarily creative to make us remarkable. Next thing is to explain to the elected officials, they all, they all know for sure, but to have some um, training sessions for the city and Ohio University and, and the council and the planning commission and everybody to get on uh, to understand how this is all going to play out. And also, to, here it is, the Munis Municipal Arts Commission. This... Uh, will have a very important role in a lot of these, especially as it pertains to any public art that come, uh, comes across the desk. Also, to tie the infrastructure ideas to the capital improvements budget, we have to pay for this somehow, and, and making it real means putting it in the budget. And I think a lot of some of these projects can even be public-private partnerships um, because uh, local entities want to make sure that that this stuff gets implemented so the obvious economic development benefits can happen. Um, also, I think that there's a lot of citizens, especially the students, who could be invited to help implement the plan. There's an idea to have a coloring book with the sketch ideas for the, um, for the elementary school students so they can get in the process while they're still young. Also, I just said that. And finally, Athens people should brag about this and tell people about it. Um, to help make this actually happen, people have to start talking about it. And uh, once development starts to happen in Athens that's remar really remarkable and true to Athens, then the bragging can really start. The end of the plan says it's uh, toward a, a forever beloved Athens, Ohio. And I think that's, that's what will happen if people stick to the, the process. And what I, hope, what I hope you take away from this webinar as I end here is this is something that I wish that everybody would do because um, I'm kind of the per a, a person that lives in a place on earth um, that isn't finished yet. And I don't accept, I, I don't, I have a hard time, my, some, my parents always said you just need to accept things for the way they are. But, but things can be so much more fun and interesting. And, and taking part in a process like this, whether it's exactly this process or something that you do locally. Um, I'm in this because I love this work and it, it's thrilling to watch things change for the better. And I can imagine nothing better than, than contributing to a remarkable place because we're, we're all working so hard. We, all, we might as well be working for something that we all can just be so, so proud of that's one of a kind and uncopyable. Okay, here's my... Um, Here's my information, there's my uh, uh, email, and you can look at more stuff and keep up with Athens plan on designinglocal.com. As a matter of fact, we are, we're starting in earnest a, a blog, a designing local blog, and what I would love for you out there to do is if you have any local, uh, anything local like the, the Honey for the Heart Parade or a very special building that people are very proud of, Please send it, and and I will I'll spotlight you on the uh, on the on the blog. Um, that will be a lot of fun, I think. That's it, Frank. Great, thanks so much, Kyle. We have a few minutes for questions. If you have any questions you'd like to ask Kyle, uh, feel free to type those in now. Um, I I guess one of my questions from this uh, process in Athens is what, what's their implementation timeline? When do they want to see all the, the meat 
presented here, when do they want to see it done by? Well, do you mean the the um, specifically buildings? Or? Right, and then I guess as far as the different, um, like with the stairways and the oh 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 that that yeah yeah that um, the answer to that is we don't know. Um, of course, the the budget has to be tied to projects, and as soon as as money is identified to do some of these things then you'll start to see these things happen. I'm sure that what will end up happening um, in, the, in, the, in the interim is choosing things that they know that they can do fast and cheap. Mm -hmm. And there are many things that can be done fast and cheap. A little paint on some stairs can go a long way, um, the stamps, those sorts of things. Uh, but Paul Loeb has let me know that there, uh, there are some opportunities for some public-private pro uh, partnerships there that can help sp uh, spur this. And honestly, I don't. There, there's not a lot of difference in paying for infrastructure that is a normal infrastructure, and a, a few tweaks will make it possible for them. But mm -hmm. a, as I said, we are just finished with the the plan, and now is comes the hard part. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. And I guess with uh, 18 months of meetings, you probably had some memorable uh, events or occurrences come out of that? Any that you remember off the top of your head? Well, what I like to do when I do presentations about planning processes is tell you about um, you know, some scary things and, and, and frightening uh, people who come through and, and, and try to make everything go wrong. But in this process, none of that happened. Really? Yes. Uh, people were super enthusiastic and very open to the idea. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I started working in Athens. Um, I've been thinking about this since I was 20. I'm 40, almost 46. So since I was 23 years old, I've been thinking about this topic and reading about this topic and having conversations about it. And um, I knew that if, if I was going to – a community had to be open to this idea. And Athens is an – it's a hard to believe kind of open-minded place mm -hmm. that let's try this. Let's, Oh yeah. Why not? Let's just see, see how it goes. So I'm, I'm thinking that, um, that once Athens starts to work that, you know, people need to see most, most places need to see, let's see how it really works before we do these things. But, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have any, any opposition. Hmm. Uh, everybody wanted to be a part of it. It, it it's really, it's, one of the most uh, joyous and fun experiences. So, yeah, I wish I had a, you know, war story to tell you about. I don't really. And so how does that work with a college town where you've got basically tens of thousands of people who are part-time residents or, or they, they come in and then they go out, but I'm sure they have a lot of their own passions about what they want to see. How do you, how do you make sure that you, you capture that slice of the community? Well, um, what ends up happening, what, what ended up happening here is that most of the people who participated in the process were, were not students, but they were graduates. Hmm. So uh, some of the graduates had, had fresh ideas because they were, you know, it's just been a couple of years since they were in school. Others had ideas from, you know, 30, 50 years ago. Hmm. So putting that together um, solved that problem in my eyes. Okay. Um, I'm sure that if we we did not have a an extensive, um, actually we didn't have time. We didn't. They were out of school when we did this, but uh, um, we didn't have a university wide participation process. But um, the the local citizens were very um, cognizant of making sure that Ohio University and Athens kind of combined their or it it was Ohio University was not left out of the process. Okay. Okay. Great. It, uh, it looks like we have a question. Uh, so we have someone saying politics seem to play a major role between community organizations, uh, typically small groups, and government establishments, and that uh, they don't always share those same visions. So I guess maybe the question is, how do you help to get people on the same page, or, or how far do you go towards getting people on the same page, perhaps? 
Well, I, this this assumes that I'm evangelizing. You know that I'm. Um, you know I'm, I want every. I, I would like to see everybody do this because it, we would live in a better world. But but realistically speaking, um, not every community is going to want to do this. And mm -hmm. and uh, um, I think that that in order for success to happen, that uh, as I said a few minutes ago, that in order for the the kind of first adopters the cities like Athens and other places like Athens, um, it's going to take a little while before people understand the benefits of this. And, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I suppose the one, one thing that you could do as a, as someone who would want to do this in your own local community is, um, is uh, maybe do your own presentation about, about what, your local community means to you and, and how important it is not to lose that. And I, I think that that uh, a lot of people on, on this uh, webinar are probably into historic preservation and and uh, it's, it's even hard for that. People tear down courthouses that have been around for 200 years and they can't see how how in the world that that the history that they're tearing down will, will never come back. So there is definitely an uphill battle to be to be um, you know to to understand before undertaking this, but mm -hmm. um, I think it, it it's up to the, if any of you guys want to try this at, in your communities, you definitely, um, I think you can get a lot of people on board who understand this and, and help the voice to uh, the, the positive reasons for making this happen instead of listening to people say, well, we've always done what we've done, mm -hmm. which is the same thing and nice stuff, so. All right, great. It looks like we have another question. Uh, question is, what role did MKSK play in the plan? MKSK was a um, a great partner, and they um, they helped mostly with the 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 fleshing out of the the infrastructure design. So the uh, the parking garage that you saw there uh, was done by Niels Brom, and uh, and that process that that led to the final uh, vision for the parking garage um, was months long and and helped guided by the the landscape architects and graphics and environmental designers at MKSK so they they came in on the um, kind of on the last end um, and and helped helped us get the vision for um, making things actually happen instead of just you know a napkin sketch. They took it to the next level. All right, great. We'll give our attendees a few seconds to ask any other questions that uh, you might have after Cal's presentation. Do you know uh, where you're headed next, where you have another big uh, community development project? Um, it it may be another I can't tell you but it may be another college town. Uh, okay. Seems like the the you know it makes sense for Athens. It makes sense for another place. But um, I would I would love to see uh, the bigger communities do more of this, and I also would love to see um, some small towns, really small towns that need that um, that put themselves on the map by doing something like this as well. It doesn't take, you know, sometimes it doesn't take a lot, and um, it doesn't have to be necessarily an elaborate process, but it, the, the process absolutely helps. But mm -hmm. um, I think the Ohio, I'm, I, let, me, let me make a, uh, some, some commentary here. I like Ohio so much because um, the bones are here, and we have the, the small towns, downtowns, and main streets. Uh, are so American, uh, Americana intact. Most of them, they they have such great potential. And we live in a place, unfortunately, though, that doesn't have a lot of topography and doesn't have you know we don't have oceans and we don't have we have hills but we don't have mountains, and people don't go on vacation here. So we have to make sure that what we do for our communities is way beyond the places that have those physical um, draws. That's our responsibility, and I think that we, even though our communities are really nice, I think that we've largely failed at that. I think that um, 
by going farther and making sure that you know, people can be excited about visiting a small town in Northwest Ohio and snapping pictures and, and putting it on Facebook and, and Instagram and, and telling people about how exciting it is to go to this really interesting place, um, then that, I think that is what we're missing in Ohio and the Midwest in general. And that's why I like to work here because there's so much potential and so much possibility that could be met um, if, if we just break out of ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. Boy, what a tough, uh, <laughs> tough nut to crack. We have a question. What entity hired Designing Local? Was it city government, a nonprofit, or a separate entity altogether? Actually, the answer to that is no community hired Designing Local. Um, this is an experiment. So in order to, to, to do the experiment, um, I, Designing Local and M MKSK worked with um, uh, the communities and it was we did we did it out of the goodness of our heart so um, definitely not going to do that again but <laughs> um, we wanted to see if it worked and um, just because you have an idea uh, I've had so many ideas in my life and I and in order to test them uh, you, you find out that this wasn't a good idea mm -hmm. and through the process I found out this is a great this really is a great idea and it it it, it, it worked it is going to work and it's fun so that's the answer to that. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we'll have one more question. And so the question is, the term used in many community developments is sustainability. So how does sustainability apply to your concepts? Well, it's hard to answer because that word is very general in, in many ways. Um, environmentally sustainable, cultural cultural sustainability, um, uh, moral sustainability. I mean, I, I, I suppose you mean uh, most people are talking about the environment when they talk about sustainability. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the, the things that is absolutely sustainable about the Athens plan is that if you look through all those those uh, prompts for design and and uh, the adjectives used and the pictures used, the um, there's not a lot, there's absolutely zero uh, examples of urban sprawl and there, there are, there's no giant parking lots and it's not auto-centric and it is, um, it's very much village design instead of, you know, widespread conventional d design that we, we absolutely know is not sustainable. But through the adjectives and the, the expectations, especially the nature part of the Athens plan, um, in order for something to be natural and, and uh, the river and the hills, that, that calls for sustainability. Um, it doesn't necessarily mandate that you have uh, you know, solar, solar panels on your roofs or that you have uh, lead buildings that are 100% are, uh, uh, efficient. But I think that the plan absolutely lends itself to sustainability in many ways. And I, I think that... Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that other communities would focus on that as much as Athens has, um, but there are opportunities for sustainability, the aspects of su sustainability to be implemented into any plan, especially if the local community already appreciates the sustainability part. This plan is not going to solve every problem. It's, it's, it's very direct toward design and how design relates to, relates to economic development. So um, it could be, though. You could inject any aspect of, of, of anything you want into the plan sure. with, with through design as well. So, Great. All right. Well, uh, we certainly appreciate having Kyle Ezell here today. And thank you to our webinar attendees for the great questions. I'll remind you all to join us in August. It looks like we have the Preservation Green Lab from the National Trust for Historic Preservation coming. And I believe we already have the link up on our website if you'd like to register for that webinar. Uh, as always, webinars are a benefit of membership, so we thank you for being a member of Heritage Ohio and wish you a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.